In this video, we're going to be creating clickable links for tracking numbers. So oftentimes with shipping acknowledgments, you'll get a tracking number, but not always will the email have a link that you can click on. You'll have to copy and paste that tracking number on UPS's site. And that's a little too much work. We want to create links that people can click on when they read emails sent with eForms that will just take them directly to their shipping status. So to do that, and let's say you don't have access to that URL in your data file, you just have the tracking number, we'll simply use the tracking number and use the ship method and of course use the static URL that the particular parcel carrier provides for use with a uh, tracking number and we'll put it all together to create a URL that the customer can click on. So first things first, I have variables here, ship via, this is the parcel carrier that uh, I'm picking up and I have the tracking number uh, provided by the parcel carrier and have those variables created. I also am placing just a static text tracking number and I'm going to place my tracking number next to that, that URL. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable here right click my form and select add variable by position and I'm going to call this variable UPS and select OK and the purpose of this variable is I'm going to create the the tracking number URL here this is what I'm going to create first I'm going to right click and select add function and set value and here I'm going to enter the URL for looking up a tracking number with UPS and it's a very long URL um, I think if you Google it you can find it um, I just happen to have it written down here hopefully I don't enter it in wrong but if we there we go that looks pretty good almost there and again you can just Google this and it'll be bound to pop up and that looks pretty good we'll go ahead and select OK and if we look here in our variables window we'll see we've got the uh, the first portion of that URL complete but the next part is the tracking number itself so I'm gonna right click that variable again and select add function and concatenate and to concatenate I'm going to select variable and from the drop down menu I'm going to select the tracking variable that contains my tracking number now I'll go ahead and select OK then if I scroll in the variables window we'll see that we've got the complete URL we've got the static you know search web service call to get the tracking number and then we have the tracking number itself so that's perfect for a customer to click on let's do another one because oftentimes you'll you're not going to only have one method of shipping for all of your customers sometimes your customer will, customers will want ex, you know expedited shipping with FedEx for example so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and right click our form again in our project window and select add variable and by position and we'll go ahead and just call this FedEx let's do it in caps just to be consistent there we go and select OK and to this FedEx variable I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select add function and set value and you know the drill here I'm just going to create that URL not so much created as just enter it and FedEx one's a little bit shorter and again you can Google this particular URL and you'll find it there we go and that is the FedEx tracking URL the first part the second part is if I right click and select add function and concatenate uh, to the variable here we'll select the variable tracking and select OK just like we did with the UPS and if we go down here we see that the URL looks good now you might say well why are you doing this this isn't a legitimate FedEx tracking number it's a UPS tracking number well the reason is is that we eForms will look and uh, we can use conditional logic to distinguish and then place the correct tracking number but it's good to configure it this way so that it will it will place 
it will find the tracking number and find the method, and then we can use conditional logic to distinguish. So that's why we add them that way. And if you have other methods such as USPS or Old Dominion, um, you can create them as such by using that static URL that they use, and then of course concatenating the tracking number or bill of lading, as it's sometimes called, uh, with Old Dominion. So we have that. Uh, let's go ahead now and to uh, our document template down here. I'm going to go ahead and add another cell to this row. I'm just right-click the row and select Add Cell, and we'll keep it we'll keep it at automatic and select OK, and right-click the cell and select Add Document Component and Paragraph, and we'll align it left and select OK. And here's where it gets interesting. Here's where we place things and use conditional logic. First, we're going to right-click the paragraph and select Add and Link. And we're going to select the variable option. And we're going to select UPS and select OK. And so we've added this UPS link. But what good is a link if it doesn't have any content to click on? You know, so we have to create that content. And we'll right-click that link and select Add Text and Variable Value and we're going to select the tracking variable. And this is what you'll click and what will be linked uh, for the customer to click. And we'll select OK. And it appears right there. And you can change the color and, and placement and all that. I'm just showing that this is possible here. But formatting options are certainly available. So we have that and that's placing. But what if it's not a legitimate UPS tracking number. What if it's a FedEx tracking number? We don't want the UPS one to show up because it won't actually be a UPS tracking number. So what we'll do is we'll right click our link here and select add and condition and contains. And let me do that again here. There we go. And the nth occurrence of ship via contains and I'm just going to enter UPS. It is uh, case sensitive, of course, and mine's all caps, so uh, just keep that in mind. But, you know, the ship via, we usually will just contain UPS, so we'll go ahead and select OK. And it's still placing because our variable contains UPS. So, just to distinguish this, let's go ahead and place the FedEx uh, tracking number as well. Uh, I'll go ahead and right click the paragraph again and select Add Link. And we'll select Variable and select FedEx and select OK. And to this link, we're going to right click and select Add Text, Variable Value. And we're going to select that tracking variable from earlier and select OK. Looks ugly right now, don't worry, we're going to get rid of it in a moment here. Because if we right click the link and select Add and Condition and Contains, we see in condition occurrence of variable ship via Contains, we're going to enter Fed because uh, usually if it's FedEx, it's going to contain Fed, right? And we'll select OK. And it's gone because our ship via contains UPS. It doesn't contain Fed. Now, sometimes uh, with FedEx, it'll, it'll actually say just FX. So what you want to do is you can right-click the conditions uh, icon here, just below the link, and select Add or Condition, and select Contains again, and just enter FX and select OK. And so what that is going to do is if ship via contains Fed or if it contains FX, it'll place that variable. So it gives you a little a little uh, protection there. So if it one or the other, it'll place it. So that is how you place a clickable tracking number, a linked tracking number to track shipments in eForms. And if you wanted to test it, you could just configure everything in eDirect Plus and just select run and output with eDirect Plus and send yourself an email just to verify that it is good to go. But this is just a quick look at how you would add a linked tracking number in eForms.